down and do number counts. But there's a this. I mean, you must have an estimate. A couple of thousand. I mean, will you be able to give me like an estimate of like total membership of the organization? Because that would no. be useful. No. Because like, because you I don't never do that. Because where did you learn this? Like, this like, where did that come from? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> um, but, so, what was your day job all this time? Police, New York City Police Department. Okay. That was my day job. And um, you're retired now. Maybe. Maybe you. I can't tell you. You can't tell me. Maybe something going on. I can't. <laughs> you can't tell me. You said you have to do your research. I just can't tell you. <laughs> I may. I think. I. I don't think you're a police officer now. But. Okay. But. Uh, um. But this that that was your career all throughout your kind of young adult and in adult life was. Yes. When did you get involved in law enforcement? What year was that? Hmm. I went from security to that. And you never believe who, who had me get into that. It was a, a, a Jewish man named, uh, from Eisner Brothers, Shalom Eisner. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No, I haven't. He owns a, a, a t-shirt warehouse on um, Ludlow and Essex. You know where Delancey Street is? Mm -hmm. And he would always come by my job and see me and says, you know, you're doing a security thing. You're not making too much money. He says, you need to make more money than that. He said, I know you're with that Bible thing. And he would always like try to joke me about the Bible. I would always get on him. But it was never uh, a thing of a, I hate you, got nothing like that. So On whose part? On his, his on part? Both, on both. Because <laughs> he knew what I taught. I said, hey, you know, you guys are Esau. You know, God hates you guys. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, let me help you out here. So I'm like, oh, what are you going to do? So he went out and got an application. And that's how that got started. Okay. So I see the most how he uses people. In various ways for his, for his life. So you're doing like you were doing private security, then you got involved in law enforcement. Yes. Right around what year was that? Um, that was eight, you know, 97, 98, somewhere around there. Okay. And so, you know, so I ask about the, the the discipline thing, also because the uh, I want to know a bit about the kind of the, the structure of IUIC and and, and clearly. It's a very structured place. Just as I as I came in here, you know, there are rules about you know security check. My bag was checked. I was patted you down. You might do a Dylan roof. Please, <laughs> Lord forbid. But you never know. Um, we get a lot of hate mail. Um, and I have you written one of those one of those letters, Sam? What do you think? I hope not. I'm gonna check your fingerprints. <laughs> Hey, get his glass and uh, hold it. Like, ha, 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 ha. I'm joking. Um, the, you know, even down to the, the titles that, that people have, you know, um, I correspond with Officer Isaac. Captain, Captain Isaac, sorry. Captain Isaac. Um, see, it's important. The, the titles are important. Um, it, it, and, you know, I, I, I know we, we have bishops, we have. I, I don't know all the details, so I want to you to if you, if you could kind of explain to me the that kind of structure and, and the importance of that in um, in the organization. Okay, you know where I'm going, right? Right back here. He's looking. He's looking. He's going back to the Bible again. Yes. Uh, when you go to um, First Corinthians fourteen and forty, God says, "Let all things be done decently and in order." So that's the premise. Everything must be done decently and orderly. And with a lot of uh, blacks and Latinos, uh, we don't like order. We don't. I'm talking about outside of the word of God. The only time we really learn organization is when we are either in uh, with Europeans, with Caucasians. When we go to your jobs, uh, whatever it may be, we learn order. But when we come back home, we hate order. Mm -hmm. You understand? But order is very important for anything whether it's a military, a school, anything. Even in the hospital, you have a ranking structure. School system, you have ranking structure. Everything is based upon order. And that's what our people need to be taught. They must be taught order. Because what tends to happen is, if we all think we're, we're equal, then what happens, the next young man goes, well, I knew, I, I'm just like you, and I should be the one 
running this. Like when you read in the Book of Kings, you had young men kill kings to sit in their seat of authority mm. out of envy, jealousy, what, whatsoever, what it may be. So it's very important for us to learn to, to work as a body. You have to respect one another's position. You have to learn to respect the time someone has, their experience, and their knowledge. It's something that has to be taught. And this, um, right, I mean, that, that I, I understand that in, in, in a general way. Um, so, so within this organization, how does that work? I, I know that, you know, what title do you use and what title, do, you know, do you have kind of below you immediately, like certain elders who have different authorities? What is the kind of um, the organizational breakdown here? Well, when you read First Timothy, the third chapter, Verse 2 mentions bishop. When you jump down and get to verse uh, 12, you read about deacons. Mm -hmm. So those are the two senior levels of mm -hmm. hierarchy. Um, when you read Deuteronomy 16, you read about captains and officers. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, right. So, so it goes. The, what the New Testament is speaking on is the same thing Moses said. Moses gave rank structures of captains, officers, things of that nature. It's the same thing in uh, the New Testament. They just use Greek words. Mm -hmm. Bishop is Greek. Deacon is Greek. One is a head priest. One is an assistant to the head priest. So, But it's the same thing that Moses had established back at the time of uh, Deuteronomy. Okay. Um, Y'all know what that is? Judges 16, 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. So what Peter and them set up in Paul was not contradicting Moses. It was flowing in harmony. Mm -hmm. So that's the same level that we're doing today. It's the okay. same thing. Okay. It has to be ranked. It has to be structured. Okay. That way an organization can flow smoothly. Okay. So, so you're the bishop. Yes. Below you there are? It's me, Bishop Kanai, mm -hmm. and below me at, we have uh, seven deacons, mm -hmm. uh, and then under them you have, I think we have ten captains, something like that. I don't know off the top, but something like that. Ten captains. Then you have officers, you got a bunch of officers. A bunch of officers, like hundreds of officers? Yes. And like then, a dozen captains? Ten captains, a dozen captains? Uh, it might be a dozen. Uh -huh. And then... This all off the top. Yeah, and then, then, then like hundreds of officers. And here we're talking about in this country, are we talking about this is like the worldwide? Oh, that's just in this country. Okay. And, um, and, and so, so what do officers do? Uh, their job is to uh, oversee the, the men under them. Okay. Their job is to make sure, like after we have a class, um, they sit down and answer any questions that they may have. Okay. Uh, and counsel them whether or not their um, family life is in order, if they need help with anything, and anything that's too hard for them, they take it up the line of okay. command. And so, there. So the, so the two bishops mm -hmm. share what equal kind of standing in this organization. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm seeing you then I second. Okay. Please. Okay. Just because in my thinking and in writing, I've always called you the the head of this organization, but. Uh, I didn't realize there was uh, so so a junior bishop, junior. Well, he's he's a bishop. I don't call him junior bishop. But you call he's, yourself senior bishop. I'm senior, yes. and he's just bishop. Yes. Um, and is he is he here too in in no, New York? No, he's out in the Midwest. Okay. And so so th then there are just members. Right? After who? After, after officers. No, they're yeah, soldiers. Soldiers. And how many soldiers are? There? A bunch. <laughs> I don't sit down and do number counts, but there's a, there's a I mean, you must have an estimate. A couple of thousand. A couple of thousand. Yeah. I mean, will you be able to give me, like, an estimate of, like, total membership of the organization? Because that would no. be useful. No. Because, like, because you I don't... never do that. Because you don't want to, or... I don't want to. It'd be, it's useful for, for me to understand. Okay, you could put, uh, give me a number. About 4,000. Okay, perfect. I mean, is that just like a throwaway number, or are you like being straight with me about that? I mean, I'm not like I don't have an agenda here. Just, it's a, it's like a, a pretty, that's a that's a, a round number. Uh -huh. That's that's good. Use that number, Sam. Okay. That's good. And you think that's like a a, a low ball or 
I mean, is that like a... That's a low ball, but... Is it, okay. It's good. And, and, th and those would be 4,000 soldier? I mean, that would be like 4,000 kind of, you know, official members. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and how does one become a soldier? What is the, the process? Uh, the process is through study, consistency, diligence. You know, is it, a is general it, love for the truth, a love yeah. for their people. And is there like a... I mean, is there like a, a period of time in which you... Uh, yeah, six you, months. You announce like I, I, I want to be part of IUIC. How do I, you know? Well, as a as a member, they come in and anywhere from three months to six months to a year, uh, they'll be members. And then once the men decide they want to get more serious, because when you say you want to be a soldier, then you're order, under orders. If we if we say we need you to go here and do this, then you have to go here and do this. If you're not willing to do that, then remain a member. You can still come and learn, mm -hmm. you know. But when you want to take on responsibility, then you say, I want to become a soldier. Okay. So, so you could have congregants or worshipers or um, kind of community members, right, who are, who are not soldiers. Correct. Who, can, who could come every week yep. and uh, learn uh, if you have, um, maybe not if you have ceremonies, like in order to, you know, what are the, what are the benefits to... What can a soldier do that a community member can't do in terms uh, of like travel uh -huh. with us? Uh -huh. um, yeah. Whole camp, go to camp, things of that nature. So camp being when we go on the street and teach. Okay, we yeah. call you call that holding camp. Yeah, we, that's what it's called. Okay, and but in terms of like, um, I know you do, you know, a big um, Passover. Uh, it can come to Passover. Uh -huh. Yeah, because remember the law said three times in a year all your males must come, so okay. all men have to come. Okay. Um, and so, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, th that's all really useful in those specific. Are well, you going to remember? Because I'm looking at your notes. See, if if in class if I saw you taking notes like this, I would have to yell at you. This is horrible. But hopefully, you have a good mind. You can remember these these things. Yeah, I got my I got my, I got, I got my technique. Um, I want this is really this is really helpful in in, in the kind of specifics you you've given me about. You know, structure and things like that are, are, are useful. Um, I want to talk a bit about the, the international outreach mm -hmm. um, because because I I think this is also this, it seems to me to be unique. I, I don't know if lots of other camps do do that type. They of, try. Uh -huh. Other camps may they be they try they try. And so so when did you start doing doing that kind of work um, of, of going overseas um, to do outreach? When like was the that? first time we went? I don't remember. Um, I would say 2000 and, 2012, 2012. Where did we go? Uh, somewhere overseas. <laughs> was it Jamaica? Somewhere in the Caribbean first. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere there. That's where we started. Okay. In 2012. Yeah. Around there. But it's going to get, it's going to get bigger. And, and the reason being is the diaspora mm -hmm. of our people. And I'm sure you're familiar with Sam. Uh, the slave trade was not just in America. Mm -hmm. Where was it at? Tell me. You tell me. No, you tell me. I need to know that I'm dealing with somebody that has some sense. The slave trade. Where, where did the different places the slaves were taken to? I mean, all over the Americas. Okay. That's it? Um, parts of Europe. Um... We're talking about the transatlantic, the transatlantic and sub uh -huh. and probably to other, um, other like colonial areas too. I'd imagine. When you say colonial areas, like what? What are you talking about? Uh, kind of probably like, um, yeah, I don't know. Teach me. You do know. You do know. Even Iraq, you have uh, Afro Iraqis where sure. slaves were taken. Sure. To um, uh, even in parts of uh, India where you have the Sidis. Right. Uh, there. Uh, when you read Isaiah 11, 11, I'll show you for example, Isaiah 11, 11, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, that's Ethiopia and from Elam, that's Persia or Iran, and from Shinar, Iraq, and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. 
the and it says, and he shall set up an ensign for the nation and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. We were scattered everywhere. Okay, for example, in Libya to this day, do you realize that they are selling black people on slave markets for $200? In Libya to this day, there's an article written, um, remember the name of the author of the article? In case you want to research it, Sam. In case you I don't want to believe this guy. I don't know what he's saying. I'm not making it up. I don't think you're making things up. I'm not, uh, mm. Oh, here it goes. Not that ain't it. Uh, I'll find it in a second. But anyway, my, the point being is that we are st even in Yemen, they have slavery in Yemen to this day. Saudi Arabia has slaves to this day. And the International Court of Justice speaks nothing on it. It's all hush. The World Court, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, nobody speaks on it. The churches won't even speak on it, okay? We're going to speak on it, because why? Our people must be gathered. It, All right. Yes? It was written by Brendan Cole. Brendan Cole, thank you. Look at that. Mm -hmm. This was published in, back in April by Brendan Cole. Yes. Spell his last name. C-O-L-E. C-O-L-E. Um, Bishop, and there's a more, a more previous one that just came out. Um, it's uh, on Euro News. Euro News it says sold in Libyan car parks for right. dollars. Hmm. So these are the things that um, the, the black church has failed. Islam is a is a, a waste of time because they won't even speak on it. But the Israelites, we're going to speak on it, hmm. and none of us are free so long as one of us isn't changed in chains. The freedom that we think we have here is not real freedom. We saw the movie Twelve Years a Slave, hmm. right? How easy is it for us to travel somewhere and disappear and end up back on a slave market? Mm. It could easily happen, but nobody thinks about this. Nobody cares, but the servants of God care, and that's where we come in. What um, what countries do you do you go to? Uh, Ghana. Um, that's in Africa, as you know. Libya, Liberia. Uh, we're setting something up in. Sierra Leone, Kenya. We just came from Amsterdam. You know, in Amsterdam, you know what's funny? Let me show you this. And also the Caribbean, right? Yes. Which countries in the Caribbean? Uh, Jamaica, St. Martin. The places where the, the tornado, the hurricanes hit, those places. What you're going to find out is once the truth goes out, judgment comes in these places. To, um, so Jamaica, St. Martin, where else? Uh, Puerto uh, Rico. Puerto Rico. Uh, Trinidad. Mexico, Mexico, Trinidad, a bunch of places. And okay, Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone. You have sent or will be sending? Will be. Will be. Okay. Kenya, Amsterdam, Jamaica, Saint Martin, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Trinidad. Other places. I want to show you this. That's Captain O'Shea right there. Mm -hmm. You notice that the sea at the top of the building? Oh yeah. What do you see? I mean, it's like a black face, a green. Right Except a black face. Right? Yeah. Let me see if I got a close up. Yeah, it's like a racist. Figurine. No, no, not racist, not racist. That was one of the Moors oh, okay. that ruled Europe. Oh, okay. That's more history that's not being oh, okay. taught to the public. Okay. You understand, Sam? I don't think you understand, but you're going to one day. The blacks that went into slavery did not just come from Africa. During the dark time of the dark ages, it wasn't called dark ages because the people were ignorant. It's because, like you see here, black people were ruling. That's why at the top of a lot of the buildings, Denmark, mm. places like that, you see black images everywhere. Mm. And people go, why are these black people here? Mm. I don't understand the history behind it. Mm. Because we were the rulers of Europe. Okay. Then when the Renaissance came, they began to systematically conquer us. A group of us fled into Africa. Those of us that got captured began the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. So mm -hmm. they didn't just get us from Africa. Mm -hmm. They kicked us out of Spain, uh, Rome, Portugal. Like the, there was a film starring Lawrence Fishburne called uh, Othello. You ever see it? He was the, one of the last Moors right. of Spain, which Moor just means blacks. How was he a ruler in Spain? Nobody discusses that. And this is the racism of American society. Because it's, oh, your history starts with slavery. No, it did not. Why? They, what is the great fear that 
how people will rise up and take over everything. We don't want that. Teach them these niggas is nothing but uh, slaves. That's what happens. Mm. Um, how many trips a year do you do? Oh, you're back on that again? Yeah. Uh, oh, one a year, something like that. One That's or two a year. Enough. One or two a year, something like that. <laughs> something like that, Sam. Only one or two a year. Myself. But I, I see on, on like Facebook, on social Are you media. being on our Facebook page? Yeah. Wow. We go to several places. Several places. And how many times a year, though? Never put a number on Sam. I never really did. I didn't. Heck, this guy be watching. <laughs> on the one hand, you tell me to do my research, right? Yeah, that's true. Right? So what have you seen so far? Uh, lots of things. Like I mean, what? Tell me. That way, I, I'll fill in a gap. <clears throat> well, I, I've seen this kind of outreach to, to uh, you know, overseas countries mm -hmm. where you're doing a sim similar kind of uh, holding camp. So let me ask you this, Sam. Because but, with some people, that's encouraging to our people, but other people, they fear and despise that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't fear, despise, or celebrate. I'm just asking, like, how it works. So you're unobjective. <laughs> you're bipartisan. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out how many times you go, and I, there's, uh, there's several, no agenda here. Several times, several times. I never really put a number on how I mean, often we travel. I mean, you agreed to sit down with me, and, 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 you, and I'm not, like, here to be adversarial with you. Okay. I understand that, Sam. I mean, the, the conditions are not, like, uh, so enticing, you know? I mean, I, you know? You know, <laughs> I know. You said him. <laughs> yes, I said him. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Thank you. So, so I mean, I, I hope by agreeing to these conditions that you'll yes. Be open let's with say it. seven times. Seven about seven, seven times. times a year. Yes. And right. you've been doing those since 2012. Yes. And and those and those are the countries. There aren't other countries that I miss any. Uh, not yet. Okay. But soon, Egypt, Libya, Mauritania. Eritrea, Iraq, well, wow. Lord's will. Depending mm -hmm. on what the condition of those countries are, we, mm -hmm. we will go. And and what is it like to to hold camp in in in? I mean, these this is a whole. These are it's a, it's a pretty wide range you're giving me here. But like, mm -hmm. what are the kind of unique challenges to holding camp in 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 a country? I mean, do, do you find that, or are there benefits? Like 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 for example, here people might have have some some association already with Israelites and be like more adversarial or like upset about seeing you in Brooklyn or Texas or wherever. Yes. Um, in, in America, black people and Latin people here, we suffer more so from Stockholm Syndrome. Mm. So we, we, we love to assimilate. So when the truth of the Bible comes out, there's more of a um, apprehension to accepting it, opposed to places like a Haiti or Jamaica, where they're not that assimilated into European culture too much. They'd be, they're more willing to hear what's going on what the Bible has to say, you understand? Mm. Like in Brussels also, there's a great mixture of black and white, European and non-European. So they're more apprehensive, like, mm, I'm not sure about that, you understand? Mm. Why, Because like one of the churches we went to, we visited, excuse me, they allowed us to teach for four hours. And there was a, a, an Edomite woman there and she paid half their rent. So they were more apprehensive to receiving it out of love for her. Out of more so than love for what the Bible says, mm. you understand. Mm -hmm. and, in, 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 in where our country where people are more receptive, you said in, in, in Haiti, for example, or Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad, places like that. Uh -huh. And were you able to kind of set up um, officers or camps in, in, in those places? Mm -hmm. And is that the is that the kind of the, the aim when you visit countries is like to establish a camp or a you know, to, 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 you know, I, I guess the, the goal, I, you know, overall, right, is, is to awaken and to, and to end gather. Yes, let me read this to you. Ezekiel eleven sixteen. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the country where they shall come. So in all these countries, our goal is to set up sanctuaries. This is one sanctuary here. Our goal is a set of sanctuaries all across. And these sanctuaries are, are meant to uh, teach, uplift our people. And not just that, make them the backbone and the vanguards for the truth and help those in need amongst our people. Mm -hmm. Because so little is done. Like, example, Haiti, the earthquake. Uh, what was that earthquake called? In Haiti, destroyed the whole Port of France. Prince? Yeah, it didn't have a name, just a regular earthquake. 
you men want to destroy most port prints. Who went over there? You had a lot of Europeans, particularly Bill and Hillary Clinton, right? Mm. They raised billions of dollars. What did they do with the billions of dollars? They built a park and three houses. Uh, think about it, Sam. You raise a billion dollars for the people, the earthquake victims, and all you built is a park and three houses. Where's the rest of the money? You understand? So nothing is still rape, rob, and steal the resources. She, Hillary Clinton even put her brother uh, over the mining in Haiti. When we went there, the people are still impoverished. And this is years later. Nothing's been done. You have the Chinese are there building roads, the Dutch are there building roads, and the people are destitute. So nothing's being done. So it's up to us to help us, you understand? And that can be taken as a good thing if you have a good frame of mind, or it can be taken as something evil if you're the devil in your mind. <laughs> okay? Because black people organizing themselves and helping themselves, some people see it as the most evil thing. On the, like the SPLC, they see that as evil. That is not to be done. Why? You're not helping us. Our people are destitute, you, you know. And, and uh, where's the hurricane just hit uh, Houston? Harvey. Um, Houston. 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 One of the congregants lost everything. We had to gather our funds together. Sorry, one of the what? Congregants, one of the members. Uh -huh. Lost everything, home, everything. We had to come together and, and help them. Get them a place to stay, clothes, food. This is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's always the opposition comes from assimilated blacks and the SPLC. Have you successfully set up camps in most of the countries that you visited? Yes. And do you call every, them camps or sanctuary? Is there a difference between a sanctuary and a camp? Sanctuary is a place where you okay. house. The camp is out on the street. Okay. Yeah, okay. And so, so a sanctuary would, would, you could also call a congregation or a... Yes. You could call it a school, a temple. Okay. A synagogue, church, uh -huh. whatever name you want. Okay. You use, you, use, you use those, all those words? Well, I, I like the word sanctuary since that's the word okay. the Bible uses. Okay. I like that. Okay. And um, so do you also, you know, set up... Um, officers or so you know did, can, can there be a, can there be a sanctuary with only soldiers or do you need kind of other leadership there to well uh, trying to keep things orderly we can't have everyone uh, be a soldier uh -huh. there has to be one or two who are more senior in understanding or experience who we can set over it that keeps order mm -hmm. if you have everyone that's the same rank there's going to be anarchy it'll be chaos Okay, so, so so a goal in going into, for example, take uh, a country where I, where where I know you've where you've, where you've been, say in Haiti, where you said people were receptive to the message. You um, were able to, you know, bring in soldiers into this, and then do, do, from those soldiers, do you select someone who who seems promising or seems like a yes. leader, mm. and, you, and you kind of make out of them an officer mm -hmm. um, and then the officer what then? He has more responsibilities mm -hmm. and looking over the being our eyes and ears and looking over the congregation. Okay. And does everybody tune into your the like the you know because I know there are lots of Periscope YouTube classes. Oh you see those too? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think it seems like this is also a way that you can kind of keep co cohesion right in, mm. in order. Yes. Um does you know, do all these camps all over the, the country tune into? Uh, yes, if they have a good internet, yes. Places like uh, Africa, where the internet is, fluctuates a lot and it's not that steady, uh, we would have we would generally send them like DVDs to watch, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so is that like a, a kind of a rule that that groups kind of must uh, all kind of be in community yes. online at that moment? Yes. So every Saturday, just Saturday, or every, how often do you do, do you? Hold I only it? teach uh, on Saturday. Uh, okay. uh, other than that, as you know, we teach seven days a week. The other, you know, captains and officers, right? And three times a day to keep the okay. understanding flowing. You know, like it says in uh, Psalms nineteen, it says, "Day unto day uttereth knowledge and wisdom." So that's a daily teaching. Mm -hmm. But you yourself hold just the Saturday um, yes. evening Correct. courses that that. Mm -hmm. 
people across the country will. will right. So that, will they gather like in community, you know, in their sanctuaries and have have a TV on? Well, you have people that, that gather together in their sanctuaries. Then there are places where there are no sanctuaries, mm -hmm. where people watch from home or watch on their cell phone. Right. Um, okay. It's just this conversation just keeps going, huh? Oh yeah. Um, how's everybody doing? We good. <laughs> how's everybody out there? <laughs> um, so 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 I want to talk about um, brother Karnai, but Israel. Oh, Carl Duckworth. Mm -hmm. And the kind of um, international attention that that you know came to the Israelite world when when this you know when Kendrick's album came out, right? Um, to me, it seems like like a pretty big kind of pop culture moment for the Israelite world um, when you have the largest you know one of the biggest pop stars. By putting this doctrine out on on the album, what was your kind of immediate reaction when when someone brought this to you? Um, you know, did you know who Kendrick was? Did you know that this line, that the, the, these like snippets were going to be there? Um, how did you feel when when, when you heard that? Uh, well, I didn't know Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I still don't know Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to rap music. <laughs> But it was told to me that he did a, a, a song mentioning Israelites and that his cousin was Brother Karnai in Jacksonville. So that came to my attention. I listened to the song. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. And I did say, I did remember thinking that God does move in mysterious ways, which is a common church saying. And what I mean by that is that for years, uh, the media has been trying to... Uh, hide the truth of the Israelites as if we don't exist. So now one of the largest uh, rappers in the world just happened to mention Israel. Um, and that, I know the most high did that. I remember some time ago, uh, a young lady on BET, it was a BET Awards, where there was an intermission and a young girl came out and did a poem about Israelites and that also got attention. So no matter what the media, the main, when I say media, I mean mainstream, okay? They try to block this truth from the ears of our people. The fear is they'll repent and change their lives. The fear is, well, I'm going to say this. People worried about the boycott Martin Luther King set up during the 60s. Don't ride the buses, right? Um, when Harry Belafonte wanted to boycott Christmas, oh, all hell came down on him for that. But guess what? That's what's going to happen. Our people must boycott these idolatrous practices. They must. And it will affect society. That is the fear that people have. It's not a fear of, oh, they're going to go through the streets and do a Nat Turner. That's not the fear. The fear is an economical fear. Why? Because once we repent, our women will stop prostituting themselves. The men will stop disrespecting themselves. And their women will bring back the family unit. We'll keep God's holidays, Leviticus 23, third chapter, for example. And which means what we're going to do? We're going to stop. Well, all right. We're going to stop eating pork. God works in mysterious ways. Yes, this, that was for you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to stop eating pork. The women will stop dressing like men. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it will have some effect on the economy. And it's going to happen. And that is the fear that many people have. It's not, like I said, I, I want to be crystal clear. This movement is about changing the lives of our people on a positive note. Like it says... Uh, in uh, Numbers 24, I'll read this. He couched, he lay down as a lion. Talk about the Israelites. And as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Here it comes. Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. Most people who hear this truth curse us. Because the outcome is a revolutionary change for our people. And most non-black people, and especially the assimilated black too, they hate, they hate that. They want and love assimilation, but assimilation has never benefited us at all. Multiculturalism has never benefited. We're always on the bottom. Whether you go to church, the school system, black people are always on the bottom. Black, when I say black, I'm referring to Native Indians. I'm referring to Latinos. 
we're always on the bottom, no matter how inclusive society tries to be. You understand? This truth is going to set things right, and that is the fear. And nobody blesses us. You understand what I mean? So when God says, blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee, people that curse us are going to be cursed. So, to just kind of redirect it for a minute if I, if I can. Yes. So that, so, 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 so you, so you, know, you, you, you see um, kind of forces or, or systems which like prevent this message from, from typically getting out, right? So. We'll be invited on a radio show, a major net, and they'll say, oh, don't use the Bible. Mm -hmm. We're like, why? They say, oh, you're going to offend our constituents. Mm -hmm. Then we're not going. Right. And, and, and so, so when, when, when you hear the, the Kendrick album, it, it's like, a, I imagine you must have been, you know, I guess, su surprise, you know, kind of happily surprised that. I was happily surprised. Okay. And, and, and I, I pray that it benefits our people, whether uh, Kendrick himself repents or not. Uh, the message is out there. Like I said, you can't stop this. It's like a mustard seed, like Christ said, Matthew 13. It's going to grow. Mm -hmm. And people that hear Israel, hopefully they'll come to IUIC as the vanguards of this truth, because we are the vanguards of this truth, and teach them God's commandments to change their lives. It does not benefit you knowing you're Israel, but you are still an idolater. Mm -hmm. You're still a, an adulterer, a thief, a liar, filled with hate for your people. You're still going to get destroyed. Like the same Europeans you point the finger at, you're going to get the same judgment. Did um, did you kind of immediately reach out to to Karnai, or or did someone say did someone did someone when it was when it, someone put it on the, put on the song and they said oh this is one of our members and did you kind of immediately reach out to them? Did you know that it was going to be on the record before? No, I didn't know. I did, no idea. did anybody in IUIC know? Uh, no, that was a surprise to a lot of us. Did, did you wish that you had known? Uh, not necessary. Not necessary. Whether it does or not, that doesn't affect me. I just pray that the message, you know, affects the people mm -hmm. and they're repenting. Mm -hmm. Did you reach out to 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 Karnai after you heard it? Yes, I did. Like immediately after? I'd been to Jacksonville. I'd visited before. Mm -hmm. I bumped into but I didn't know who his family was or anything okay. like that. And, and is he a, a, a soldier, an officer, or a community member? What is his? Mem he's a member. He's still a member. He's a, meaning not a, he's a, not a soldier. Not a soldier. Right, yeah. He's a community member. Yes. Um, meaning he'll, he, he can come, but does not, can't, doesn't go out on, he can't hold camp. Uh, does he go to camp? Not yet. No, sir. Okay. And um, so, so, so what he did with his cousin, these kind of teaching sessions, is this kind of permissible within? It's permissible, and, definitely. And, and, and was his teaching of Kendrick um, kind of on that, that very pu kind of public teaching of Kendrick, um, was that also permissible or, or, or was yeah. that, it wasn't, any, it wasn't offensive to no, you in any no, way? Not at is, all. Anything where you can get the gospel out and our people begin to change and spread the message is positive. It's, you know, that's beneficial, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so so it, it didn't, it was not a, a, a breach of, kind of authority or protocol. No, not at all. Uh huh. Um, and was there anything on there that you kind of, the way he framed things, or anything that you kind of objected to? No, Deuteronomy twenty eight is the the which is the blessings and the cursings upon the Israelites. Right. He explained it very well. Okay, you know, so we did a good job on it, and all praises to the Most High. Um, I just pray that people. Realize that verse uh, 15 is the, the standing point where it says these things shall come upon you if you break God's commandments. So, like I was saying from the beginning, that's the point where we have to come back to the commandments. We can't just say, oh, I'm an Israelite, but I'm smoking weed. I got three girlfriends. I'm having sex with them. I got kids all over the place. I don't take care of any. I'm not saying that's what uh, Kendrick or anyone is doing. I'm saying if that is what's happening, mm -hmm then it's not going to benefit yeah. you at all. Have you reached out to Kendrick? No. Do you plan to, or? Uh, well, I did tell Karnai, I said, if in the future that Kendrick ever wants to speak with the leadership, I'm all, I'm open for it. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what did, what did Karnai say? He said, okay. Uh -huh. And is Karnai- But it's, it's not a, uh, what I, I'm not a, what's the term? A star, uh, mm -hmm. 
groupie. A groupie. I'm not a groupie. <laughs> so <laughs> when, when, you, you of when you chase somebody who has status in the world, the prayer and hope is that our people who do have status, fame, and fortune help us because there's so much work to be done mm -hmm. that we can't do alone. It, it takes the group. Like it says in 1 Corinthians 12, it takes, we have to operate as a body, a body of people that accomplish the goals that God has given us. And that takes resources, things of that nature. You know, we can do it collectively ourselves, but it would be an asset to us if a Kendrick Lamar or an Oprah or an Idris Elba or somebody like that comes in. Or even if you donate to us millions of dollars. Hey, that'd be great. Did you think I have this? <laughs> <laughs> but it would be great. My, my, the point is this. If, I, if I had, I wouldn't, I, I'd come with my cameraman and uh, oh, you know, okay. an SUV. I, I'd come on the subway with a, just my backpack. Well, you can hire Jonah. He, he's old, old enough for that. But, uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be beneficial to us. And as, as you see our work, our work is a positive work for the upliftment of our people, our downtrodden people. When did, when did you kind of make this open invitation to, to, to Karnai about Kendrick? Uh, there's a video up. Uh, what's the name of that video with me, Karnai, Bishop Karnai? You saw the video. Yep. He's sitting there. I don't remember the, when it was, but that's the video. Okay, when you're there in Yeah, Jacksonville. we visited. They had a grand opening. Right. Um, they had Where a grand you opening. Jacksonville, right. Yeah, so we went there for that, and then... I said, oh, let's talk with Carl right. and I do a little quick video. Right. So, so you saw the, this brief article I did about that where, where, you, where you said, kind of asserted to, I guess people were asking whether Kendrick was a member or not. Correct. Um, and you and, know, and why, why was that important to, 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 to clarify that? Because uh, there's another writer who's on YouTube, I forgot the guy's name. He made it seem like it was the most offensive. I, we did a video on it where the guy was saying, Anthony something, Benito Trump. Fandango, I remember that. Yeah, and he, he seemed so offended that uh, Kendrick Lamar mentioned Israelite. Mm -hmm. It was offensive. So I'm like, why is it offensive to him? We're doing a good work for the up But he sees it as, no, they're going to change their lives for the better. That's not good. Let them stay on the bottom. Let them stay down. That's always the mindset of a lot of Caucasian people to keep us down on the bottom. Look, we gave you a black president, Obama. Obama was... Uh, a puppet president. When they asked him about slave reparations, you know what his answer was? I don't know. Give him jobs. They asked Bernie Sanders the same thing, give him jobs. Hillary Clinton, give him jobs. Nobody says give them reparations. Uh, Jewish people, so-called Jewish people, suffered for five years under Adolf Hitler, right? Reparations. The Japanese were in intimate war camps for five years. They got reparations. But the blacks and Latinos who suffered for hundreds of years, give them a job. And nobody sees the disproportionateness with that. No one sees anything wrong. I'm like, either they've got to be stupid or evil is one or the other. You can't have it both ways. You're either stupid or evil. <laughs> so, so, so why was it important to, to clarify that, that Kendrick was not a member? Uh, it's very important because I don't want them to... Um, um, malign him, mm -hmm. um, try to say anything negative, because you have a lot of Israelite camps. Some are decent, some are good, and some are utter garbage. And they will try to destroy his career by trying to associate him with a negative camp. And when I say negative camp, I'm talking about camps that uh, teach things as you can rape women. A camp that says you can steal, just don't be, uh, stay in the spirit. Things like that. You're talking about Grand Millstone. Great. Great Millstone. Yeah, that, like that. So you don't want to, and uh, that would be such a bad thing, a negative thing for him in his, his young career. So um, I want them to understand that. I want you to understand that, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I get the Cause variety. Like, of I'm going back to, to, to the friends, not your friends, but to SPLC. They'll try to say, look, Kendrick Lamar's with a hate group. Well, what hate have we done? Who have we burned or lynched? Who have we hurt? What have we done? We've tried to uplift the people, but they'll just put a, that's like a code word, hate group, and everybody, oh, I'm not, right. you're a hate group. I remember speaking to a district attorney once, and he goes, he said, well, let me look you guys up. And what pops up? Southern Poverty Law said, oh, it says you're a hate group. I said, well, have I said anything hateful to you? No, but that's what they're saying you are. So, and this is the, this is what's being done in society mm -hmm. right. against us. Right, so, 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 
Um, so it would be better for Kendrick Lamar and these stars to help us and assist us from behind the scenes, opposed to coming up saying, I'm with them. Because what will Europeans do to them? Destroy their lives, destroy their families. They'll destroy them. That's what they'll do. So it's beneficial that Kendrick does not say he's with us. <laughs> I, I, it's, 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 I mean, it's kind of a nuanced take in a way because you're you're kind of admitting that you're saying that there's this like stigma, whether you like you know that you like object to on mm -hmm. the one hand, but uh, but believe that, but recognize that it could actually be detrimental to both the artist and your own cause. Exactly. Uh, Imagine if, if Oprah Winfrey repented and joined us. Do you think she'd still have a career? I don't know. A, I mean, Be it's honest, a, it's a Sam. I mean, that's, a, that's like a big hypothetical. I mean, she's a, I mean, she's an interesting character in her. Uh, I mean, she, she's she's introduced, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, different type of spiritual material to her audience over the years. Right. I don't know. I mean, I, I'd be interested to see that hypothetical. I'd be I'd be I, interested to write about it when it happens. I'll tell you, um, her career would end. Her, her network would go. <laughs> they would pull out. Right. They would pull out. Um, you know that, too, Sam. Is, you know that. No, I don't. Oh, yes, you do. No, 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 I know no, you no. do. I mean, we, I, I don't know. Well, it I, hasn't happened. Um, I don't know. I can't foresee like that. Um, is, uh, is... What's that? A Starry Stottlemyre name? Amari Stottlemyre. Amari Stottlemyre. Whatever. I can't pronounce his name. I've, I've written about him, too. He Maybe has he been following IUIC and all that, liking our pictures, all of that. But he knows that if he says, I'm with this group, his career will be over. So what did he do? He chose what's called a safe Israelite camp. A camp that teaches all nations. Israel and God, you're talking about. Uh, yes, all nations. Everybody can come in. It's more Christianized. That's safe. We're not safe. Do you, do you have a contact with Amari? Uh, personally, no. But, but we, we have, brothers have posted things, sent them things, you know. Things of that nature. I've reached and, out and, to and, him. and he has kind of responded. He's re responded like, "I like this. I like that." You mean like actually writing, "I like this." Like or you know when you like hit it, the like liking button. something like okay. that. So, yeah. so just on social media. Yes, that's on social media. And there's a lot of stars who are aware of it, but no one asked the never asked the question. How come they've never been on a mainstream interview on uh, News One, uh, CBS, NBC? Never. Like we don't exist, and that's the media's right. problem. And, and why, why do you think that, for, for you know that that Kendrick made this? You're saying it's like a really, really risky choice. What do you what do you think moved? moved do you have a sense of what moved Kendrick to to do that? To um, do what? To uh, you no know, to um, I mean you know maybe not directly to identify, but to um, you know to include this teaching on his. I think he did that for the truth's sake. Once uh, Karnai showed him a scripture, and it's undeniable. Undeniable. You cannot read the curses and say, oh, that fit Jewish people in Israel. Really? Well, when did they have yokes of iron on their neck? When did they go in slavery on ships? I want to read this history. When? When were their families, when were their nationalities destroyed like that? All those curses fit us. So the media understands that. Once it comes out, you can't undo what's done. And that is the fear of waking up the lost sheep of Israel. That is the fear. Mm -hmm. do, do you believe that, um, do you, do you uh, <clears throat> is Karnai still a member of the AYC? Yes. He's currently a, a member, a community member still, not an officer, yes. but a community member. Mm -hmm. I um, spoke to him uh, three days ago. Okay, what did you guys talk about? Uh, so how's it going? I, oh, about the hurricane, that, that was, Jacksonville got hit. Uh -huh. I asked him, was everyone okay? Was, was he all right? He said, yeah, everybody's good. Okay. So I just sort of Is he in a position of like leadership in the, in the camp? Uh, in the, in the no. sanctuary? All of them in Jacksonville are young men. Uh -huh. They're all young. Like soldiers, colonized under them. Mm -hmm. so, but nobody has like, reached officer or captain or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got one sentence. Yep. You're not going to remember anything that was just said. Unless you got that I'm in the court. Oh, okay. Don't worry. We're going to read his article. I want to see this, what it, Sam writes. <laughs> you read my other ones? Oh, those were decent. Those were decent. Those were good. That's high praise. 
Yes. From you, that's right. That's, that's really high <laughs> praise. Um, there you go. Is the um, so the, this this hurricane um, is this uh, scripture? Is this, is this God's hand? Is this is this divine punishment? Well, um, I'll read this Isaiah. And, and are all like you know all kind of natural disasters to be spoken about the earthquake too? Mm -hmm. Do you see God's hand in in these uh, disasters? Isaiah twenty nine verse six. If I can, it says, "Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder." and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Like in Cali, there's fires of all time in Cali. These things is the Lord visiting the earth. Judgment is approaching, is coming upon everyone, including our people. Our people that reject the truth and our people that accept and the nations who have helped destroy us. Judgment is coming and there's no way around it. Do you see, um, I mean, I, but if, for example, the, if, if a hurricane affects, as you mentioned, uh, a community member in, in was it Haiti? No, it was Houston, Texas. In Houston. Or if, 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 your, if your people in Haiti also suffer, for example, or in Jamaica, for example, um, are, why are they? It's still judgment. Mm -hmm. For example, during the Babylonian captivity, remember, Daniel went into slavery, mm -hmm. and he was righteous. You understand? You never rise above the status of your people. Mm -hmm. Never. Okay? Wherever, and Oprah Winfrey, I'm going back to her, she found out when she went to France to go shopping. And they wouldn't let her in the store. She said, I'm Oprah Winfrey. They were like, we don't care who you are. So that systemic racism will follow us. Mm. And my point is that uh, no matter how great you are or get, uh, not only will racism follow behind, but judgment still comes behind you as well. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel was righteous. He went into slavery. Okay? The three young men that were with Daniel went into slavery. Mm -hmm. You know? So if the righteous Israelites still suffer, I see. everybody's going to get it. If we can get it, you're, you're going to get it. I see. So, <laughs> I see. So, so, as a, so, so, so a people will suffer until all people are under the law or observing the... Well, they're going to suffer until the 12 tribes of Israel are established. The Bible uh, prophesies that when the 12 tribes of Israel are established and all nations, we have all nations following God's law, guess what? Then will there be peace on earth. And not before. Not before. There will be peace when the 12 tribes of Israel are established. Do you um, place, in, for you, is, is the land of Israel um, an important land? Um, I know some Israelite groups go... Um, you know, on pilgrimages also. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you, is the ingathering also a, a physical thing for you? Um, and uh, is that something which will also come to pass when, when people kind of come to, to an understanding of who, of who they are? Well, I have to read the scripture to you. <laughs> Watch this. Ezekiel 36 and 5. I just want to read this. This is about the land. Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. You know what Idumia is? That's Greek for Edomites. Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with despiteful marriages to cast it out for prey. So the Edomites have taken the land. That's what 1948 was, the League of Nations was all about. Right now, our people, some of our people uh, tend to go there. Like you have uh, the, Is the Israelites who have set up in Demona, Israel. Mm -hmm. They still suffer under a racist regime. Okay? Remember what, what's his name? Sharon? Sharon? Sharon. What's his name? Ariel Sharon. In order for them to even be considered citizens, he said you have to join up. You want medical and dental, you have to join the military, help us fight against the Palestinians. But why? Help us fight them. Okay. Then you have Ethiopians flown in there. And if you go on YouTube, they're called niggers. They're beaten in the streets. They still suffer under a racist regime, even in Israel. 
the group House of David went to visit Israel. They wanted to go to the wedding wall to see it. They made to wear yarmulkes, which is against our custom of wearing, covering our heads. They said, if you want to go, you have to take off those garments you got and wear a yarmulke. That's humiliating. So they were humiliated when they went. Did they go? Yeah, the House of David went over there. They went over there. And I mean, did, did, they, did they, they put on the yarmulke? Yeah, they put on the, use the videos on YouTube. You see them put on the yarmulke mm -hmm. and go up to the Wailing Wall, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and this isn't said out of hatred. I love them, okay? We love our people, but we see there is no land on this earth wherein we are free. We are still under A, America, or A, or B, the European allies of America, which includes Israel. We're still under you. We can't change it until the Lord returns. So until then, all we can do is set up sanctuaries and teach our people, prepare them for the second coming. That's all we can do. Does the second coming come after the, uh, does, does, does the ingathering and the, way, the establishment of the 12 tribes, does that kind of precede the? It's going to precede. Uh -huh. That's so, when so, so, in Zephaniah 2 and 1, it commands us, gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather together, O nation not desired. Mm -hmm. That's why from the time of colonialism through chattel slavery, we're, we've always been the ones not desired. That's why I mentioned earlier about Libya, the selling of blacks in Libya, slaves. Yemen has slaves. Saudi Arabia has slaves. Okay, Over in Denmark and Brussels, they have a, the, the holiday of Santa Claus and right. uh, Swarte Pete, right. where they mock black people, right. which right. that whole thing is about... Swarte Pete represents the rulers of Europe during the Dark Ages. Santa Claus represents the Renaissance era. That's, and they conquered us and enslaved those of us who they captured. Hence, Santa, uh, Swarte Pete is a servant to the Renaissance version of Santa Claus. That's what it's all about. So, so you're in the work, in doing the work that you're doing, you're, you're kind of participating in like a almost like a messianic process of, of, of that is like of, of, of ushering in a, 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 the, the kind of messianic age. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And that is what happened. I wanted to show you this also. When we were in Brussels, you heard of King Willem Alexander, right? King of the Netherlands? Yeah. Okay. Now, every year, it's around September, black people from Suriname and uh, Curaçao, Curaçao? Curaçao. Curaçao. They go there and wait for him and his wife to apologize for slavery. He arrives in this coach, this golden 24 karat gold coach. Mm -hmm. And then, but on the side, look what's on the side. You see the slaves? Do you think a man that rides around in that is going to apologize for that? No, the answer is no. Yeah, it, looks, it looks pretty uh, kind of glorified. Yeah, and you got the blacks serving them you know, in that position of slavery. So, and this is 24 karat gold, it's overlaid. Right. And every year, that, and it's drawn by eight huge horses, mm -hmm. pomp and circumstance, beautiful. And the black people go out there, oh, you're gonna apologize? Uh, I don't want an apology. What is an apology going to do? Mm -hmm. You could sit here and say, I apologize on behalf of my people for slavery. W will that change anything? Will that, will that change the condition of our people? It's just a no, Sam. It's words. They're words. It's just words. Um, that's that's really interesting. Um, I hadn't seen that that carriage that this carriage and, and didn't know about that ceremony. Um, so 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 the, so the restoration of the, of the people to the land. I mean, this is this is like, a, kind of pr prophetically, or, 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 or this is something that 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 will happen, but it. It, it's going to happen in God's time. Happen in God's time. It's not going and, to happen with us raising our fists. It's not happening like that. And, and the, the, the way in which you participate in, for in, in, in bringing that, kind of ushering in that time is doing the work which you are doing, which is uh, spreading the word to people. Yes. Um, and in the hopes that they will uh, understand who they are and live under the law. And once all the people are living under the law. Uh, God will, Jesus will return. He will return. And, and that's going to be during the time of World War III. It tells you that when, he, when the Lord returns, it's going to be fire upon the earth. The nations will be at war with one another. Okay, I can't give you a, a time, but we must prepare ourselves. Christ said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. So 
like I always say regarding the other Israelite council, what sets us apart from them is the teaching of God's commandments. You must change. If you are a thief, a liar, you have to go if you continue in that lifestyle. We can't deal with you. Right. Until so, your mind is you know, I want to change. Right. So, so, so it sounds like a lot of the outreach you do, though, is to non, is to kind of new, to, to people who are not coming from other camps. Because you just, at least in the early days, you described people who come in, they kind of have this baggage if they, yes. they come out of. Is that still your kind of yes. new operation? Is that you kind of seek uh, new members, not. Yes. To, because of, what happened, I'll give you an example. Um, we were in class one day, and we a new, a new brother came in, and he, uh, he had a wife, and he, his, his wife uh, wanted one of the captains with us. You know what I mean by it. She wanted him, okay. sexually. But it's like, is that your husband? Yeah, that's her husband. You can't have Captain so-and-so. That's filthy. You, where are you getting this from? They brought that from the other camp, another camp, where it's, they teach, well, I don't know the name of their camp, where it came from, where a woman is allowed to be with whoever she wants sexually. No, that's adultery. Mm -hmm. You understand? Then you get brothers that come in, and they want a multitude of women. And the scriptures say, have one wife, you know? Barcelona is getting bombed. <laughs> RT News. Mm -hmm. um, so now, our lives must change, Sam. The lives of our people must change. Now, what you may see that as something evil, or you can see that as something good. You understand? It's good for us. Uh, the prisons won't be filled with people. You know, they'll they will change their lives and be able to take care of themselves. You understand? They won't be doing these dumb videos about uh, like in Houston, people are crying. So white people are just passing us by in boats. Then you get your own boat. You know, we have to learn to start doing for ourselves, helping ourselves. That was good that uh, the dominant uh, nation, Europeans, help us. But it has to come to a point where we help ourselves. Like Giuliani made us. He was in an argument with Eric Dyson. What's his full name? Eric Dyson. Is Eric that Dyson. it? You know what I'm talking about? Michael Eric Dyson. Michael Eric Dyson. And he was talking about systemic racism, this racism in the police department. So Giuliani said, well, why don't you black people police yourselves? And I was like, what a great idea. We should do that. There's nothing wrong, but it was, oh, you know, it was a big, big thing. But we should be able to, like amongst Jewish people, Eastern Parkway, right? You have the Shomer Society, right? I mean, I don't, but well, they do. So-called Jewish people have the Shomer Society. The and I've, met, yeah. I've met many of them when I, when, when, during work. Hey, who are you? I work for the Shomer Society. We're going to help you out. We have, they have their own ambulance and all that. But when we try to do it, Sam, you know what we're called? Black separatists, mm -hmm. the hate group. How come no one says it's Jewish people, Sam? Can you, maybe you, since you're Jewish, can you help me out here? You call them Jewish separatists? How come no one calls them Jewish separatists? <laughs> or white separatists? How, they have their own police, Schaumburg. Right. They have their own ambulance, Hatsola. Right. Yeah, I mean, they, they certainly want, They have their own want, schools, the want, yeshivas. want to live apart, and they, right. and they do. Even um, the Amish. For sure. Nobody, the SPLC does not attack them. Why, Sam? Help me out, Sam. I can't speak for the SPLC. I, and, I, and I don't represent them. <laughs> but can I ask a question? Of course you can ask a question. I, th I think we've been on this territory. I, think I just love this I, topic. I, th I think we've been on them. <laughs> you called yourself, the, the, I, you called IUIC the vanguards of truth. Yes. Um, why, uh, why uh, like, w what's different about what you're doing? Um, w w what, makes, what makes you the vanguard and, and who appointed you the vanguard? Oh. Well, our works speak for itself, our works, meaning uh, God appointed us right now. For right now, things could change in the future if I got the devil on me. Lord forbid or somebody else got the devil. But right now, the outreach that we're doing, there's no other camp. Not sit knocking them, but they're not doing what we are doing. And we understand about organization better than all the other camps. If someone gives us, let's say someone gives us a million dollars, you understand we know how to help the people with it. We know who's in need, who lacks. Whereas another camp, not pointing any camp out, they'll go, oh, I got a million dollars. Hey, call my five wives. I can buy each of them new shoes, a home, and cars. That's the difference. We're not living off the donations to better ourselves. We're doing it for travel, helping those who are destitute, down and out, who lose their jobs. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing with it. When we get as small of donations as we get, whether it's 50 cent, 
whether it's a dollar. How can we put this to good use? And is that how where most of your fundraising comes from? Is from donations from members? Uh, don, uh, donations come from members and people who are not members. Mm -hmm. And is there like a tithing, like a system of, of, of uh, ten percent? Like, no, we don't do that. Uh, but do you, but do, are the members pay dues? To uh, they they the donate. Uh -huh. They do send contributions. Okay. So but so so most of like the, I mean, fund fundraising is is from members and and, and officers and. Believe it or not, Sam, there are a lot of people who have not joined us officially, mm -hmm. but they, they see the work and believe in the work that we're doing. And they, they, too, send donations. This helps us get to places like Amsterdam or Brussels or Ghana or Liberia or Kenya. That's, that's how we get there, mm -hmm. through their kind don and generous donations. Okay. And they can see we're not living a flamboyant lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Our wives are not living. My wife still works. She's not driving around in a Rolls Royce. None of that, mm -hmm. you know. We help our people. That's what our forefathers did in Acts 2 and Acts 4. Where I'll give an example, Sam. Watch this. This is, sets us apart also. Uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 34. Watch this. It says, Neither was there any that among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and bought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So we look for those in need. When people give us donations, we give them the money. What do you need? Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. That sets us apart from all the other Israelite camps, where it's a more of a me, 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 me. Oh, this donation is for me. No, it's not for me. It's for the people. You understand? Uh, sister gets in a car accident. She has no car. She had... Uh, what when you don't got full insurance? What's that liability? liability. Now she can't get another car. All right, but well, we have X amount of money this month. Let's help her out. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Get your car. She has two kids, no husband. We help her out. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. So, but some people, as I said, they see that as hatred, a hate campaign. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're filled with hate. How what are we doing as hateful? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can answer this for me, Sam. Why? Why we? Why do they? Again, I, I can't speak to the, the SPLC <laughs> Center. There, they have their criteria. I don't know the. I'm not. I give another don't, example, don't, don't Sam. Put, don't, don't don't put me in in, okay. in, in this camp. In Las Vegas, um, as, just as I wouldn't put you in, I wouldn't say, oh, all, all camps are the same, right? Very good. I'm glad. Right? That. Thank you. I appreciate right? you on that thing. Watch and, this. Right, and and you can't say, oh, Sam's the ADL, Sam's SPLC, Sam's That's true. Sam's Sam's, Assad. Sam's Sam's uh, Net Netanyahu. Sam, right. and, you know, it's not. That's not fair. It's, that's like, well, I mean, fair is not true. You're right, it's not true. Fairness well, is like something else, but uh, you know, accuracy is something else. Las Vegas, a young black girl uh, was found missing. And news, was it News 4? News 4 does a report, Israel United in Christ kidnapped the child. We're calling, what's going on? What's going on? We had to hire lawyers to get them to stop saying mm -hmm. that lie. Mm -hmm. but. As a result of SPLC or the hate group, they're the ones, okay, let's use them. So when we speak to one of the investigators, we say, why are you saying we kidnapped the child? Oh, we saw one of your flyers in the uh, family's house. But there's a flyer of McDonald's there. Do you call McDonald's and say, oh, McDonald's kidnapped my child? No. But they do it with us. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The disproportion, mm -hmm. the racist, the systemic racism that comes from these groups. Okay, and their whole thing is stop this movement. We cannot have black people and Latin people uplifting themselves, bettering their lives, getting decent jobs, getting a better education. That's so evil. So just back to this idea of vanguards. Yes. Um, y you're a, you see yourself and IUIC as the vanguards kind of what, because you're doing the most action or because you have the truth in, you have, you have the truth and others don't, or, or both of these? I mean, is it just because you're the, you're the most active, like you, you kind of have the most energy behind you, Do you or, or are, there, are, you, are you the only camp with the truth? No, I would, I would never say we're the only camp with the truth. We're the only organization with the truth. Yeah, or organization with the truth. Um, what separates us, like I said, is keeping God's commandments. And being staunch with it. So others are not keeping God's commandment and being staunch with it? No. Uh, like I gave examples, you have camps that teach multiple wives. Mm -hmm. Because of during the time of Moses, 
when we were in our land and we were wealthy, we had multiple wives. Like Solomon had uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. He was king. He was wealthy. He was rich. You can't apply that here in America. You work at McDonald's or you work at uh, what's the Home Depot mm -hmm. and you make $6 an hour. And the law of the land here is one wife. And then go, no, nope, I'm going to have multitudes of wives. Um, so, so I know that in the... Um Comforter. Okay. Um, right. I, the acronym is escaping me. The I C G C. Um, you know, this was someone who um, was kind of put up as actually holding a kind of an anointing. Or a, yes, they said um, he was the comforter, the Holy right. Spirit. Um, that was and, a new and, doctrine right, that and, came and, when the money came. Right. And, and I'm not. And I'm not speaking disparaging. You know, of, of anyone's. Beliefs, you know, my bit is they can mm -hmm. believe what they want to believe. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here kind of judging or policing people's doctrine. Right. You understand what I, I mean? Understand. Yes. And so, 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 so that's a lead up to asking, like, you know, are you, do, do you possess um, some sort of kind of prophetic or, you know, kind of an elevated status within this organization? Do you, you, know, do you, do you speak? Does God speak to you? Do you speak with God? No. Um, God only speaks through the scripture. That's it. If mm -hmm. I can read it and understand it, I know the Lord has revealed it. Mm -hmm. so, so in terms of your leadership here, it's not, it's you were not, not lifted up by, right. by God. No. Um, uh, you, or, or, no. You, okay. There's no divine whatever, and I'm the Holy Spirit, none of that. Okay. So, so, so the, the authority you claim here, or the, Is you hold this, here? Uh, through experience, uh -huh. time and the truth, that's it. All right, um, I think we should probably wind down pretty soon because we've been talking for a few hours. Okay. Um, but uh, let me think if there's any other. The, uh, so so the, 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 the gold and purple, mm. is this, uh, when did this, was this garb from the very beginning? Um, and, and, and what is this Well, if you look against? at the, the older videos, the first ones when we were on the street teaching, we didn't have any garments. I had, we had fringes on, that was it. Mm -hmm. So I remember talking one day about what Christ suffered when um, they dressed him with a crown of thorns and put on a robe of purple and began to beat him. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? We should wear purple. And then uh, Deacon Malachi was a young man at the time. He overheard the conversation I was having. So his wife went and designed a purple garment. And from there, that's what we did. Okay, and it's just, it's just kind of a way to distinguish yourself. There, yes. there isn't a, a kind of like a scriptural thing. Probably not because you would have already flipped open to it if there was. <laughs> well, there is this is one of the rare moments where you actually like describe to me like the person who, you know, people involved in it. Well, in, um, <laughs> when you read in Samuel, uh, King David had young women, virgins, and it said he had them all dressed in the same garment, uh -huh. colorful garment. So I saw it as a type of order, okay? And we do definitely, it, where you, wherever you go in any job or organization, there's a dress code. Whether it's even the police department, the military, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, you go to work for Goldman Sachs. That can, you can't go in there with a t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers, or short pants. Okay, mm -hmm. put on your suit and tie. A lawyer, you gotta wear okay. dress a certain okay. so it's So it's also kind of part of this larger project of, of, of order. Yes. It brings order. about order, yes. Yeah. It brings about unity as yeah. well, yeah. you know. Uh, women, is funny with women, they like to set themselves apart from other women. Yeah. They want to, I want to see more beautiful than this woman. And that's a, a form of covetousness, mm -hmm. vainglory. And in order to uh, stifle that, that thought, the women, we, we give them a, a garment to wear. They all dress the same. That's like as this men, we all dress when we're all together. And it, it, it's a form of humility. Mm -hmm. That I'm not trying to distinguish looking better than you. Too about with women. Because in church, you ever see the women come with the big hat? Right. Whoever got the biggest hat, that's the mother of the church. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. they got, the heels got to be like this. If your heels is like this, the next one right. come like this. Ridiculous. So it's also a thing kind of keeping congregants on like a... On the same uh, plateau. Okay. Even headed, even keeled. Yeah. Um, like if you notice countries that have a dress code in schools with children, right. those schools f do fairly better than New York public schools where ever you can dress the way you want. Because what happens? They want to steal each other's sneakers, steal a gold chain or the ring that they may be wearing. Mm -hmm. That's why in the Caribbean, if you look at those schools, those students are more, more astute than the ones here. Right. They all dress the same. You know, so I observe 
I observe all it's these things. Right, the yeah, it's a form system. of discipline, correct. Um, okay, I'm sure that there are questions which I have forgotten that we'll information. Do it again. And uh, all right, we'll do it again. Um, when's your When's the next? Like, when, you're, you have like a big festival coming up, or, or anything? Uh, we have Feast of Tabernacles coming up. Uh -huh. Uh, Day of Atonement is also coming right. up. Those three. Well, Feast of Atonement is going to be held in Oklahoma, North Carolina, and Atlanta. We have three main locations. Okay. And do you hold like big festivals here at this space? Uh, New York, no, it's not that big. Places are more expensive here. Huh. You know, so we go to other places where it's more affordable. Okay. For us and larger. Okay. Would there ever be a festival that I could come to? Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we have a men's conference you could possibly come to. Okay, just to, because the, to actually see kind of ceremonial presence of, or, you know, of, of the whole group might uh, be interesting too. Okay. All right. I'll keep, the, keep that in okay. mind. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Um, well, thank you. I, I think we can formally, I guess, formally conclude our, our time, uh, but I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. You take it easy, Sam. Yes. <laughs>